Right, hi, I really don't know what it is about today and I might get frustrated in this, but because this is the 13th time and it's not even like it's gonna work, it's like the 13th time is never lucky, of trying to film this video. I keep trying to film it, but I keep messing up my words. So, and I just don't sound good at all. So I just end up doing it all again. So hopefully this is okay. I wanted to thank you all for the great support on uh, two videos ago. Uh, I did a video about conformity and um, that went down really well. It didn't get the most views, it didn't get the most likes, it didn't get the most comments that I've ever got before. Um, but you know, the people that did private message me, the people that did comment, uh, it was all positive. And re people really liked the transition from like stuff about asexuality, stuff about minority sexualities to something very different. Uh, a lot of people messaged me to say, I really like this, you know, this new side of you because a lot of my videos recently have been about asexuality. So it's nice to, I feel like I'm speaking really fast. It's nice to do something different. Um, but like I say, most of my views come from uh, asexuality based videos uh, for a reason, because most of my subscribers are asexual or are part of like a minority sexuality, because that is what I started off doing. So inevitably videos about that cause the most discussion, which is what I want to really create from this channel. I really want people to discuss it. I really want people to share it. I really want people to you know, spread awareness about minority sexualities. And this video actually helps explain why I want to do that, which is a clue. So in this video, I'm sort of like combining the two. So I'm combining uh, the original ideas of like I did in conformity. So I'm doing, I'm talking about something that's not even directly related at all to minority sexualities, but then I am linking it to minority sexualities and asexuality because I think it's very important. And I think it's a, it's like a sort of a paradigm, it's a mindset of that a lot of people haven't really looked into and it does make you think. So in, in my video two days ago, I did about a study that I studied in psychology at during A-level. And I'm gonna start by doing the exact same here. A lot of people liked me doing that actually, which is strange, but I'm glad that you did. So another video, an, another study that I studied was by a guy called Milgram, I think in the mid 20th century. I'm not 100% sure, I haven't checked it up. I think it's in the 50s or 60s, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's a lot more well known than Ash's study that I talked about in the last video. Um, simply because I think one of the big reasons is because Darren Brown, uh, he's a mentalist here in the UK, uh, did a, a show on Channel 4 and he sort of recreated Milgram's study. And a lot of people who had watched that obviously watched Darren Brown and had never heard of Milgram study before, but he sort of recreated it. And funnily enough, it came out with the same same results as well. So it is worrying and you'll see why. Um, so today's video is all about authority and that people are um, more likely to be prone to like being subjected to authoritative figures. And, you know, if people do have authority, then they sort of have power. Um, over like people that believe they're subordinate if some so so people like um you know teachers people like your boss people like professors uh people anyone that's got you feel like has some sort of authority over you your parents everything you know like that sort of he was basically testing to see how much power these people have and teachers is a big one and i'll get onto that in a sec um so basically what milgram initially did is he got uh somebody that was in on the study uh, to wear a science like lab coat and the experiment was taking place uh, in like a science lab and basically uh, a lot of I keep saying basically as well uh, participants would come in one by one and they would first initially be shown a guy um, tied up to who was in on the study so nothing happened to him uh, just a disclaimer so he was in on the study uh, but the participants were shown this guy on a chair uh, who was strapped up and he was strapped up to like um, this electric chair basically so and you'll see why in a sec so they were shown in first and then they were asked to go into a room uh, which was basically where they would have control over electrocuting this guy and basically the guy in the lab coat who was obviously in the study he wasn't a scientist at all he was just an actor um, but obviously the participants thought he was a scientist and they believed that this person in the other room was about to get electrocuted. So you had a speaker over in the room as well. So uh, if they, they could hear supposedly the guy getting electrocuted, but obviously it wasn't actually getting the guy getting electrocuted, that never even happened. But they think that, you know, the participants obviously think he is. 
So basically the participant had to ask the, uh, the guy in the electric chair some questions. And if the guy got the questions wrong, they would have to administer an electric shock to him. Now, these were varying degrees of electric shocks. You know, every question he got wrong, it was a more intense electric shock. And it got to the stage where, you know, if he had answered like 15 questions wrong, you would hear uh, the participants were hearing like the guy, like, like sometimes there'll be no feedback at all, supposedly, like as in like the guy was passed out by the electric shocks or even dead, some even the participants thought. Um, but Milgram found that because the guy in the lab coat was telling them, t telling the participant to administer these electric shocks, the participants were doing it. They weren't saying, why are we doing this? What is the point in the study? But just because, like, there was no rationale for it. There was no reason why. But because the participants were being told to do this by a guy in a lab coat, so he's a scientist, he knows what he's doing, um, the participants were given in because they felt like, you know, that was their job at the time for all this study, which is really sad to think, right? And, you know, th there was participants that went right to the end. There was partic there were some participants that, like, uh, gave up halfway through and said, no, no, I can't do this. I need to leave the study. But, like, a l I think almost all, you know, did at least a few electric shocks before, you know, some of them left. And the reason this is important, because, it you know, Darren Brown even got these same results that people would just keep administering these electric shocks, uh, thinking that they were really hurting somebody. But because they were being told to do it, they were doing it. Um, and the reason this is important is because it's sort of a metaphor for everyday society in the sense that if you go into school, if you go and see your teacher or you go into a classroom and your teacher teaches you things, you're going to believe that's true because they're, you know, they're, they've got authority over you. They're higher than you. So what they say is fact. That's it. There's no subjective opinion that they're feeling out where, whereas it is all subjective opinion. Unless it's like, fat, you know, like maths, whereas two plus two is four. But if they give like their own opinions or something or whatever, you know, a lot of what they say is subjective opinion. And, you know, pupils and students take that as fact. You know, it's, it's why, you know, teachers aren't allowed to swear or teachers have to, you know, be aware of everything because students replicate what teachers do because because of their authority over them. It's the same with parents. You know, it's the same with when you're young, everyone that's higher than you, uh, as it were. Um, so, it, you know, it's obviously the same at work as well. You know, if you, if your boss tells you to do something, you will do it. And it's sort of like an end, you know, there's always somebody higher than you. Even if you're the boss of something, you've got another boss and you've got, another, you know, it's it's hard to see where it all ends. It's all, you know, you've always got someone that's got authority over you. And to think that they could do this and have this sort of power of you, it really makes you think. So the way I'm going to li I'm linking this to sexuality and minority sexualities is because of the power. Te and I said about teachers as well, uh, the power teachers have in the schools. Um, now, when I was in school, I, in biology, in uh, PSHE, which is personal social health education. Is that right? Some of like that or personal sexual health. I'm not sure. One of the two. It was called PSHE. It was a session we had every week. And, you know, obviously we learned about it in science as well, all about sexuality, all about safe sex, everything about that. Great. You know, it's, it's great that we do learn these things in school. I'm not opposed to it at all. What I am opposed to is how narrow this is or how narrow it was like, uh, when I was in school anyway. Uh, for those who know me, you know, and or have seen my videos in the past, you know that I didn't find out that I was asexual through school or from teachers saying there's all these different sexualities. You could be one of these. I found it out through searching myself. So if I hadn't searched up on the internet, you know, I have no urges for sex, you know, or anything like this. I feel different or whatnot and found Avon, found asexuality and saw it was a real thing. I would have never found it out from school. Um, so it was always in school, it's always you're going to go through puberty. You're going to be attracted to the opposite sex. I remember that as well. Um, and, you know, you're going to want to get married, you're going to have kids, you're going to do all this. And it was sort of like your plan, your life plan was sort of set out and it was sort of determined by you, for you, by your teachers. And because obviously we perceive this as fact, we perceive this as something that will happen or it is the right way to do things. Suddenly, if you're against this, you were a delinquent and you were de deviant amongst your peers. So suddenly, you know, because I'm like, th I was like this, I did feel alone and a lot of people at school just sort of perceive me very very differently 
it did, you know, and that showed so much, especially in year 10, which was the first year of GCSE, which is where we learned most about it. So I was 15, 16 years old. Uh, and when, when we learned most about like sexual health and stuff like that, at that sort of age, uh, suddenly that was when I sort of, well, I acted really badly at school because um, when I'd lost, you know, when friends were telling me this, that you can't be this way, you know, you're, you're not different, you're normal, but you're being pathetic or whatnot. And like, also spreading rumours about me and being this way, I did turn into a nightmare at school because I did rebel because, you know, I just hated how I was and hated how I felt so differently. So, you know, it ended in me even being excluded from school for, for just acts that I just, you know, I felt so alone because I was like this and because of my peers being this way towards me, I just hated it. I hated being that way. Um, but obviously because everyone's told this is the right way to do and that it is fact, you know, later on, you people are going to resort back to that and think, you know, this is what I learned at school. Like, obviously it's, so got, it's, it's people, something that people don't even realise, you know, it's just in your subconscious, but I've noticed it. I notice it all the time. But something that is good and something that I do like is nowadays, obviously, uh, some uh, minority sexualities are more, you know, are talked about a lot more almost spoken about you know that you get gay teachers you get um everything like that whereas you know you probably didn't back like 30 40 years ago for sure i don't you know i don't know for definite but i i can i can imagine that in schools right now it's a lot more diverse in terms of sexualities amongst teachers uh at least i'd hope it's the case uh and there's a lot less judgment uh which has caused obviously uh this generation uh my generation and younger uh, to be a lot more accepting towards those who are homosexual. I work, I work with a guy that is gay, and he's spoken so much, and I find it so interesting. And you know, some of his stories are just great, and it's really nice to hear about. But it's really sad to hear as well. But he's he's double my age, and but back when he was in school, the way that he was treated for being gay was horrible, and he hates it. You know, even his family were uh, not very nice towards him because of this way and he didn't get on with his dad because of it um but he says now you know coming into a workplace the people that are younger the people like myself like other people that are my sort of age are, are the most accepting towards him being gay because we are brought up to think you know being gay is just as normal as being straight whereas you know people who are older and people that are his age and older sort of are still not accepting and the way they speak about homosexuality is still disgusting and still you know so judgmental and so homophobic as it were so we you know that it has been situations where he's come out to people and people have people have treated him like like I was at school you know when when I came out as asexual um people were like no nah, it's not like that and sort of perceived me differently and didn't talk to me as much because I was that way uh, it's the same with him you know but people just judge him for being this way if they're all it's very interesting so what I'm suggesting is because obviously now um, homosexuality, bisexuality, you you know, uh, minority sexualities that are spoken about a lot and are a lot more well known um, are in the curriculum now and actually are spoken about. Um, obviously, a lot more acceptance occurs nowadays. So what I want to see is just a lot more and like hopefully further down the line, 20 hopefully way before 20 years ago but i want to see a lot more integration about minority sexuality it's about all of these things and all of these differences about people um because hopefully then over time it will it will be the case that you know i would come out as asexual to anyone and suddenly it's just as normal as being straight or as it's just as normal as being gay and so it's it's lovely to see how far uh, the acceptance towards homosexuality has, has come. It, it's crazy to see, but it, it's still a very narrow point. I mean, like I say, when I was in school, like homosexuality wasn't even talked about. It just wasn't. Um, but, it's, you know, it's, it's more common now. Um, but it still isn't in a lot of schools and amongst society. I think in the US, uh, someone, one of my subscribers was saying it was st it's still quite uncommon for anything other than uh, heterosexuality to be spoken about in schools. It's, it's, a, it's a shame. Um, but yeah, I just want to see that over time. You know, I want to, I, I would love to go into, and I always suggested this as well. I would love to go into schools and like speak about it more and just be like a volunteer speaker or whatnot. I would love to do that. I honestly would and like take questions and, 
you know, just speak like I am now, but instead of to a camera, to people who were well, people who were like me at school, shall we say, that, you know, felt they were different, but then they would get a label for it rather than having to search it up online, you know? Uh, even if that is just like one person in in a in a year of a thousand, you know, asexuality affects it affects. It sounds like a disease. Uh, about one percent of the population are asexual. Uh, so I mean that's you know in statistical terms that's you know if if there was a cut if there was a year group of three hundred uh, pupils, then there's likely to be three that are asexual. You know, so the fact that I could have an effect like that or even just enlighten everyone else about it and, um, you know, make people think, uh, that's something I'd definitely love to do because I, I'd love to help out like that. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, I, I feel like this is 16 minutes of me rambling about not very much, but hopefully you understood. Um, and it's a very interesting, uh, uh, study like my last one as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching. Hope you had a lovely Christmas. Uh, let me know what your plans are for the New Year's as well. I hope 2019 treats everyone okay. And I'll speak to you very soon.